Sometimes the world tries to tell you differently, but I believe that miracles can still happen. Just when it seems impossible, the unexpected happens. When you least expect it. Once upon a time, on a dark and cold winter's night, I saw a bright star shining from the east, and I followed it. All of a sudden, an angel of the Lord appeared and said, do, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for all mankind. Today, a Savior has been born to you, and he is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, Peace to those whom his favor rests.
praise the Father, praise the Son. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of the glory, God of the praise forever to the King. One of my favorite songs of the season, Joy to the World, but with a little drum twist. Come on, let's put our hands together tonight. Hey. Yeah. 
joy to the world. Joy to the Christmas Mountain Park, you can be seated. Thanks so much for joining us this Christmas Eve for Christmas Eve at Mountain Park. We are so delighted that you've chosen just to worship with us. I'm one of the pastors on staff here. And if this is your first time gathering with us, whether you're online or in the room, we welcome you and we hope that you'll check us out in the new year during one of our regular um, services at 9 or 10.30 a.m. Speaking of services, I just want to let you know that maybe you've never worshiped with us and today is your first time. We want to see you here with us on any Sunday, but this Sunday, December 26th, we're going to gather online for two services at 9 and 10.30 a.m. So don't miss that. You can check it out on YouTube, Facebook, or just go to mountainpark.org and you can watch it there from the website. We also want you to know that we have some excellent decorations around the building and would love for you to take photos or share with us some of the pictures that you take um, throughout this season so that we can just join your family or maybe repost those on our social media um, platforms. And then finally, I just want to tell you that, you know, those of us who are believers, when we give you know that it's making an impact. And one of the things I'm so proud about in Mountain Park is that we truly believe in making a memory, making a friend, and making a difference. And we do that. And over the last several months, we've done things like the packing party for Operations Christmas Child. We had angel um, gifts where people were generous to help local families that are in need um, right here. We packed food for people for hope, for the homeless. There's so many things that we've been able to do. We've also been able to go not just in our city, but around the world and send people. And we're so thankful for that, but we could not do that without your generosity. And so if you would love to give, there are four ways on the screens that you can do that. One of those ways is as you exit today in the drop box, you can give an offer and it will go to advancing God's kingdom and fueling the life change that we see. As we move out of 2021, we get to look forward to what God is going to do in 2022, and we want you to check out this video for the things happening here at Mountain Park. Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Joy to the world. Peace on earth. 
goodwill toward men and women. So deck the halls. And have a holly jolly Christmas. Because this is the, the most, most wonderful, wonderful time of, of the, year. the year. Which, given the year we had, is not saying all that much. That's true. I mean, it's been a year, right? It's been a year. COVID-19 spikes and mass shootings and, and racial unrest. That and, and supply chain issues and, and gas prices going up and, and January 6th. And domestic violence and suicide on the rise. Yeah. And uh, there's been hurricanes and, and wildfires and fights over the vaccine. Yeah, some businesses went under. Some marriages ended. My father died. It's been a year. And how many times did we pray for healing? For hope. For peace. For restoration. For unity. For relief. I kind of feel worn out with hoping. Weary of wondering if anyone's listening. If anyone cares. If I should care. Well, now, this is kind of depressing. <laughs> It is, but, but it's also real. Well, what do you mean? I mean the questions, the doubts, the loneliness. The hardship, the pain, it, it's all real, yeah. Yeah, so it's worth talking about. Well, maybe if we were alone, but I mean, what about all of them? Oh, trust me, they know it's real too. <laughs> I know they know it's real, but who wants to talk about depressing things on Christmas Eve? Look at them. They all look sad now. <laughs> well, thankfully, it's not all we're going to talk about. Praise the Lord. But it is a good place to start. I mean, after all, I think some of the people in the very first Christmas probably felt the same way. Yeah, you know, you're right. I mean, they were mostly Israelites, and the Israelites, they'd lived under the oppression of other empires for centuries. They had a really difficult daily existence, and they'd prayed and prayed and prayed for God to set them free, but it just seemed like he wasn't listening. Yeah, it had been over 400 years since God had spoken through a prophet. And sure, they had promises from the past, but by then, were those promises starting to feel a little stale? Or expired and empty? You know, I bet their prayers sounded a lot like King David in Psalm 42 when he prayed, God, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about in mourning, oppressed by my enemies? My bones are in agony as my foes taunt me day after day, saying to me, Where, Where is, is your God? God? I tried to talk to my piano. I tried to talk to my guitar. Talk to my imagination, confided into alcohol. I tried and tried and tried some more, told secrets till my voice was sore. Tired of empty conversation, cause no one hears me anymore. A hundred million stories and a hundred million songs, I feel stupid when I say. Nobody's listening to me. Nobody is listening. I talk to shooting stars, but they always get it wrong. I feel stupid when I pray. So why do I pray anyway? If nobody is listening, anyone? Get it wrong, I feel stupid when I pray. So why am I? 
feel stupid when I say nobody's listening to me. Nobody's listening. Do you ever feel that way? Ever felt that? That wondered, asked those questions? Maybe, maybe tonight you're here and that's a little bit of how you feel, that you look around at everything that's going on. You maybe look at what's going on inside of you as much as what's going on around you and you just wonder, is, does anyone really care? Is anybody really watching? Does anyone feel the pain that I feel? Does anyone understand what I'm going through? Does anyone really care? And maybe you prayed and you prayed and you prayed and it seems like no one's really listening because everything just seems to stay hard. And if, if that's you tonight, then I just want you to know this is, this is one of the best places for you to be. You know, we, we often think of church as a place where you go and everything is awesome, right? You, church is a place you go and your marriage is doing awesome, your family's doing great, everybody else around seems to be doing great. You just feel God, you feel like he's really close and it, it's just wonderful. And it's okay to go to church in those times. But church is also a sanctuary. It's a place we go when we're hurting, a place we go when we're in pain, a place we go when we're questioning, a place we go when we're doubting, a place when we feel what this song is talking about. That's part of what church is supposed to be. This song was written originally performed by a singer named Demi Lovato. Maybe some of you know Lovato. Lovato uh, has sold, I think, let me see, uh, two, 27 million single tracks and another 4 million albums. Lovato has over 54 million followers on Twitter. 54 million people who log on just to see and pay attention to what Lovato has to say. Lovato has performed concerts all over the world in in North America, South America, uh, Asia, Europe, Australia, everywhere except the penguins in Australia. Are there penguins in Australia? (laughs) Penguins in Antarctica. Right? And, and, and the, the concerts have grossed over $183 million. Like literally, hundreds of thousands of people travel miles and miles for this express purpose of being with and listening to what Lovato has to say. So, can I ask the obvious question? How is it that someone who is literally listened to by millions of people is singing about nobody listening to them? In fact, when you go to YouTube, this song, it has over 630,000 views. Which is a little ironic, isn't it? That hundreds of thousands of people are listening to someone sing about nobody listening to them sing? Now, this is not a criticism at all. In fact, I think this tension is part of what makes that song so powerful, makes it so meaningful for us. Because it taps into something that is deeper than just hearing words. It's not just about the words that are being sung and whether or not someone listens to those words. It's not about whether or not someone likes those words. It's not about whether or not someone likes the person singing them. It's not about popularity or or just ad- adoration or admiration. I think this song is about something way, way deeper, something that is a foundational prayer of the human heart. That deep in, in every human being, there's this prayer to be known, to be heard, to be, to be understood. It's a prayer that, that there's someone who knows, who, who values us enough it is a prayer for us to, to know that we matter, that we value, that there's someone who values us enough to come next to us, to sit beside us, to listen to our pain, to hear our hurts, to carry them with us, to share our burdens with us, to step into our world and sit in our hurts, 
to experience what we experience. We have this deep need for that. And here's the good news. Here's the the great news. Here's the fabulous news. God answered that prayer. God answered that prayer with a, a baby, a tiny baby like you saw in a manger, born in some backwoods town in the middle of nowhere in the Middle East to two nobody parents who we would never know existed if it weren't for that one moment, that birth. He came into our world And that answer, that answer on on that day was so powerful, so emphatic, so conclusive that a hundred years later, despite having no social media, despite having no printing press, a hundred years later, people were still celebrating that birth. And 200 years later, people were still celebrating that birth. And 300 years, and 400 years, and 500 years, and 1,000 years, and now 2,000 years later, people all over the world in, in Siberia and Greenland and Iceland and Sweden, and I don't know why I'm naming all cold places. I guess it's just because I live in Phoenix. But, but, but all over, people are, are singing in different languages about that answer to one of these deepest prayers of the human heart, and we can forget that. We can not, not, to, not forget like we forget literally that it happens, but we become disconnected. We get sort of numb to that truth, and we sort of can get into this mode because of all the things going around, around, on around us, because maybe of our own pride or whatever's going on, we get to the place sometimes where we just say, yeah, look, we talk about Jesus all the time. We talk about him being born and into how God cares about us, but it doesn't feel like that right now. It just doesn't feel that way right now. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who was uh, sharing some some real struggles that they're having, some spiritual struggles. And and let me just for a second say, I love that we are a church where that's okay. And and when I say we, that means that we, we, some of you who are here, you've helped create this space where people who are struggling with their faith can come and know that they're welcome here. And I think that's awesome that we can sing a song like anyone and recognize that's a reality that people wrestle with. I think that's awesome. And so they were sharing their struggles with me and they were trying to find this word to describe how they felt and they really wrestled with it. And finally, they looked at me and they said, Jan, I feel lost. And it wasn't just a frivolous lost. It was a deep-seated sense of lostness. He said, I just don't feel like I have the connection to God. I just feel lost. And so we started talking about it, and we started to, to, to sort of analyzing it and try to examine what it caused it, what its root was, and maybe how to address it, and all these things. And no matter what we talked about, every time we brought up an idea, they would just say, no, that's not it. It just didn't click, just didn't resonate with them. And finally, I just sort of felt God tap me on the shoulder, and I just said, you know what? Maybe we're not supposed to analyze this feeling that you have. Maybe what we're supposed to do is fight this feeling that you have. Maybe what we're supposed to do is reject this feeling that you have. Maybe what we're supposed to do is overcome it. Maybe what we're supposed to do is stand up against it and say, no, I am not lost. I am found. I have a place in God's family. I am a citizen of heaven. I have a place in the kingdom of God. I matter because he came to be with me. That's what makes church so great, because church is a place, we, we are the, the repre- physical representation of Christ on the earth. We are the place where we can come and be reminded that we are not defined by our hurts. We are not defined by the challenges. We are defined by who God says that we are. So you can go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, singing anyone. You can go through your week singing, is there anyone? Does anyone listen? And when you come on Sunday, you can know that we're going to take you by the hand and we're going to come together as a body of Christ and we're going to sing, there is someone who's listening. There is someone who cares. There is someone who came to this earth and carried our pains, carried our burdens. The book of John. John, by the way, was a friend of Jesus. He'd interacted with Jesus 
He had conversations with Jesus. He taught Jesus do things. And he wrote a bunch of them down in this book that's in the Bible called The Gospel of John. And when he was writing about the birth of Jesus, this is what he says. He says, in the beginning, in the beginning there, he's talking about the beginning of the world. He says, in the beginning was the word. And you may or may not know that the Bible is not written in English. It was written in a bunch of different languages. And, and the word that's translated to the English word, word, is actually a Greek word, logos. And, and it, it refers to, in this case, it's referring to the intelligence, the reason of God, the, the very essence of God's mind, his, his will. And it says this, this essence, this will, the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning and through him all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. And then in verse 14, the word, this essence of God became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. See, Christmas is the celebration of the God who hears us, of the God who took on flesh and come, came to be one of us, came to be with us. He took on our hardships, our infirmities, our pains. See, God is not just a distant God who says, boy, your room is a mess. Go clean it up. And then when it's all clean, come get me. I'll come inspect it. And if I think it's good enough, then maybe you can come, to my, come and have dinner. I don't know why I put an accent there, but I did. <laughs> right? I mean, that's, that, no, no, no. What our God is, our God is the one who says, I see the mess you made in your room. Can I come help you with that? Can I come, can I come work with you in that? Can I come into the very mess of your room and work and bear that burden with you? Can I bear your mess in my body? And not just the mess of your room, but the mess of your heart. Can, will you let me come in? Let me come in and help you. Let me give you hope. Hope of forgiveness. Hope of second chances. Hope of love. Hope of mercy. Hope of life after death. Hope in the midst of the hurts and the frustrations in your heart. Hope to overcome the obstacles and challenges in our life. Let me give you that hope. Yes, things get hard. Yes, we get weary, but we are never, ever, 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 ever alone because our God dwells among us, and we forget that. Church is the place where we come to flip that song upside down and, and not, just, not just sing that it feels like nobody's listening, but where we can come and we can actually sing there is someone who's listening. So we're going to sing a song here. It's a Christmas song. Some of you know it, I'm sure. And there's a line in it that says, Long, long, long lay the world in sin and error pining. For a long time, not a short time, a long time, the world was wondering, is there anyone Listening, is there anyone who cares? And the song goes on, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. Do you know your worth? Seriously, do you know your worth? Do you know to the level of which you matter to God? Do you know how valuable to him you are. Do you know that your worth is not wrapped up in, in, in your money and how much you make and how successful you are and the titles you have and the number of people who like you or the people who laugh at your jokes or, or how beautiful your spouse is. By the way, mine's the most beautiful. I'm sorry. I'm just going to sell that right now. <laughs> but that your worth was settled in that manger by a God who said, you matter enough for me to come be with you. Till he appeared in the soul felt its worth. Next line, the thrill of hope. The weary world rejoices. You notice it doesn't say the weary world. Teb, come on. The weary, the weary world stops being weary. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say the weary world stops being weary. Ha, got it. It says the weary world rejoices. Did you know you can rejoice in your weariness? That they're not opposites. That Jesus came so that we can have joy in the midst of the difficulties. 
So we're gonna sing this song. Daniel's gonna come out, and as he sings this, I just want you to allow this to be a declaration, no matter what you feel, no matter what you came in with tonight, no matter, no matter even what you maybe believe about God right now, would you just allow this to be true of you? That God, on that holy night, showed you how much you're worth by coming to be with you.
You know, it's hard to imagine that on that night that it was silent. Between the roar of revelers in the EN and the shuffling of travel-worn animals in unfamiliar stalls, could it have been quiet? Could it have been silent? Or think about on a hill, there were shepherds keeping their flock. I wonder what kind of sound the flock makes when their sleep is a, disturbed by the heavenly host. You know, the angels came, the shepherds came, and eventually the magi came to worship this infant king who would bring joy to the world, hope, a thrill of hope while the weary world rejoices. You know, it feels like for the last few years that the world is weary, people are weary. If you go to a restaurant, workers are weary. Those in the hospital, in the medical profession, they're weary. Those who are trying to make the best decisions for our good, they're weary. But you know what? That night, when God gave us his only begotten son, he brought peace, comfort, and joy. Because of that night, all the nights that we experience, and those that are maybe walking through a season of loss, you've lost someone, and this is the first season without them, you can rejoice because there is a God who sees you, who knows you, who loves you. And because of that, we sing of his glorious birth. So tonight we're going to sing this song, which has been sung so many different times in so many different languages of that silent night. Let's continue to worship together. To us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. 
of the greatness of his government and of peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. Heavenly Father, at one of the darkest moments and the hopeless moments of our, of our world, you came. You didn't just send a message. You didn't send a person. You came to us. And as we look at the lights that are shining in this dark room, we're reminded that you want not only to give us something to remember, you want to give us yourself to be with us so that we're never alone, that we're never abandoned that you also are for us so that in our brokenness we know where to turn. We have an advocate, a forgiver. And not one of us need to leave here with any other than the, the assurance of this, that you also want to be in us. So today we say, come into our hearts, Lord Jesus, that when the lights of our candles go out, may the light live in our heart that symbolizes you. And may we shine to this world so that the people who have walked in darkness will see a great light. We pray in the name of this great light, the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. We're going to end tonight with one final song, so let's sing together. <laughs> And a happy new year. Good tidings we bring to you and your kin. Good tidings for Christmas and a happy new year. Oh, bring us a figgy pudding. Oh, bring us a figgy pudding. Oh, bring us a figgy pudding and a cup of good cheer. We won't go until we get some. We won't go until we get some. We won't go until we get some. So bring some out here. We wish you a merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas.
Christmas. God bless you. Have a great night. Thank you.